Yeah, welcome to our last session, um, which won't be a panel, it, won't be a, it will be a fireside chat between two um, representatives of uh, two very interesting and uh, different companies. Um, this on the one uh, side is Wyatt Jenkins, he's a vice president uh, product of Shutterstock, and uh, Tom Cummings, um, the vice president growth and inside of SoundCloud. And the Fireside Chat will be um, host and moderated by um, AC Coppens. And AC is a founder of uh, Marketing Catalyst here in Berlin and I think based also in Zurich. Yeah, well, so yeah. New York and Berlin. New York, Zurich and Berlin. Okay, so everything very international. So yeah, I wish you a lot of fun, guys, and um, pass the microphone. I'm going to start. We were asking ourselves, where is the fire? If it's a fire such chat, now we know where it is. <laughs> we're like melting on stage, basically. Yes, thank you. Um, why? I mean, I'm, I'm AC Coppens. Uh, I'm the founder of the Marketing Catalyst. We are um, a boutique consultancy for innovative and creative companies between tech and music, film, and design. So that's why I'm here. Actually, my name is Dutch. You might hear from my accent that I'm French. I'm sitting between a UK citizen and a US citizen. You might also ask like, what is this weird constellation? But uh, the question, the, um, the reason why we're all here is uh, I met uh, Wyatt as I was accompanying a creative industries delegation from Berlin to New York. And uh, it was uh, at the Internet Week in New York one day before you launched the music services. And as I was about to meet uh, SoundCloud in New York, thinking about Berlin, New York, and this guy from um, New York to Berlin, I thought, like, that's a nice crossover session, and we decided to do this for the Berlin Music Week. So that's why we're here. So normally a fireside chat is with two people talking in front of a fire. We said, okay, the fire we have, that's right. Uh, I'm here in the middle because uh, SoundCloud has a reputation to make no statements and say no figures, so they probably booked me so that I'm like in the middle and talk a little bit. <laughs> so, um, but let me start as a, as a French person, I'm supposed to be polite, let me start with a newcomer to Berlin. And uh, I will introduce you to Shutterstock first. First, I don't see you guys at all, but who knows Shutterstock in the audience? Okay, quite a few people, that's very nice, okay. So Shutterstock, uh, founded 2003 by John Oringer with a very nice and original idea. Crowdsourced images for businesses mixed with a subscription-based model. Um, today, uh, it is uh, 40 plus million images, two million video clips. The guys who knows House of Cards might know the introductory sequence. They are Shutterstock images, videos. Four images sold every second. One million active uh, um, uh, customers in 150 countries. And it is two twice bigger than SoundCloud. Well, we don't know figures about SoundCloud, but I can tell you that uh, with uh, <laughs> 470 employees, something like that, it should be the double audit. So that's Shutterstock. Um, on my left, SoundCloud, I still found some information about you guys. Um, very famous in Berlin, for sure, but uh, heard in every country in the world. It's the YouTube of audio, that's uh, what we know about this. The company, I don't need to say so much, we are here uh, in Berlin, is based in Berlin, also uh, in New York, San Francisco and London, one of the common points with uh, Shutterstock too. Uh, originally gained popularity because of um, yeah, um, sharing electronic dance music stuff, but now um, grown to a place to listen to podcasts too, also for organizations like the White House, sharing recordings, so I think uh, that's a yeah, um, place to be a couple of figures here, more than 10 million creators, 12 hours of audio uploaded every minute. The service has 350 million listeners a month. As I was preparing this chat, I must say, I had to revise the figures of these two companies like every week because it was growing all the time. So now I have the figures of um, a couple of days ago, yesterday for Shutterstock. So especially Shutterstock was like, ooh, okay. Good. So these are my guests. And uh, I would love to um, go on a little bit. And uh, I hope that you're going to tell me more about yourself. And uh, you two guys know each other. You're both uh, in the music field a little bit, and uh, yeah, who wants to start? Maybe you want to start, you're a newcomer. Okay. <laughs> I have one, thanks. Uh, my name is Wyatt Jenkins, I'm the head of product development at Shutterstock. Um, there are three bullets on my resume. One, I was a DJ for a long time, uh, in the 90s especially. 
Um, and then I helped start a company called Beatport.com, uh, which some of you might be familiar with. I think we, uh, Beatport has an office here in Berlin. Um, and then after Beatport, uh, I came over to Shutterstock in 2009 uh, to head up product development here. Um, that's the high points. That's great. Uh, anyway, you said, Tom, you are musically inclined. You're not coming from the music originally, or you're not a musician? Uh, I have played various musical instruments in the past, mm -hmm. but not to any degree of uh, professionalism. Um, certainly never DJed. Although, actually, that's a lie. I've DJed the SoundCloud Christmas party using my iPhone. <laughs> it was pretty rad. When was that? Every Christmas party for the oh, last three years. Oh, every Christmas party, okay. <laughs> they keep inviting me back. Send me an invitation. I want to check it out. <laughs> Great. So, um, where do you guys hear music? To which services do you subscribe? SoundCloud. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Wow. You? Um, I, I, it's a variety of sources. Um, yeah. Definitely SoundCloud. Mm -hmm. um, occasionally some Spotify. Uh, that's probably about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Vinyl, record collections. Well, you know, I actually calling my friends and asking them what they're listening to or emailing them and getting recommendations and then going and finding that wherever it lives is probably okay, the number so one you, source. You are an adept of a human touch uh, curation, right? Yes. Recommendation, mm -hmm. non-virtual, okay. Yeah, I still hold um, a candle for old, good old-fashioned music journalism. There's still some people writing um, great stuff about music out there um, and there's a lot of great recommendations, a lot of great writing, and that's where I get a, most of my inspiration outside of SoundCloud from. Mm -hmm. So when do you hear music? Because I said where, but when? When do you have time? Uh, I definitely listen to music cycling. I'm a cyclist, so I put on music for many hours in a row pedaling. Okay. That's yeah, I know number you're one. A bike, are you right? You? I mean, people at work know that if I've got my headphones on, that means I'm trying to concentrate, but it actually just means I'm listening to my stream, so <laughs> all of the time. Trick. <laughs> okay, good. I would like to start maybe the first block with the common points of your companies, because obviously we have here uh, two uh, very different companies with different business models. I will go uh, into the second part, but the common points I can find here certainly is both companies are totally innovative, has, have been disruptive uh, uh, on the growing markets, um, one on imagery, but then now also on music, and we will see that there are other uh, markets you are going to explore. Um, and they both make creative goods um, available from between creators and uh, customers of these goods with two different business models said B2B and B2C especially. But um, we have actually both companies as an interface between uh, creators, contributors and customers and users. I would like to know in the audience like who is a creator, composer? Okay, who is a um, um, label? Publishers? Okay. Wow, that's interesting, guys. I mean, you have an audience like directly from the source here, so that's cool. Um, maybe I would like to, as it is a fireside chat, we want to have it nice and easy, we said, um, before we go to the hardcore business model stuff. Um, you are both in Berlin and New York and in another town. Like, what do you like most in Berlin? Where at? You've been there before too, right? I mean, for Beatport and et cetera, so. Yeah, I mean, this is the second time I've been at a business that opened an office in Berlin. Um, both creative businesses uh, at Beatport. Um, you know, the music coming out of Berlin was amazing and it was really important for the growth of that company to, to um, have an office in such a creative music location. Um, that was out of the Native Instruments building. Um, and then with Shutterstock, it's, it's similar, right? I mean, Berlin has a wonderful design hub uh, there's a lot of creative going on here. And then now Shutterstock's as well in the music business. So, um, you know, again, it's a creative asset company. Uh, it's a marketplace. And it's really important to have a foothold in, in this part of Europe. Um, but why Berlin and not London or Paris? I mean, We Paris. have an office in London as well. Um, right. So it's not... That's right. It's but and. Uh, the, uh, um, how many people do you have in London and how many people do you have in Berlin? You're right. At Berlin right now, we're about 30. Um, and in London, we have... I think 10. C. <laughs> uh, one of the things that's great about Berlin is the, the tech talent too. There's, um, there's just some amazing engineers here. Um, and, and a lot of engineers actually come to Berlin from all over Europe, um, which I think is really important for us too because we have a good, uh, strong product development effort going on in Berlin. 
Tom, I think uh, for you it was uh, quite uh, sure Alex and uh, Eric came to Berlin also, but what is the uh, importance uh, of Berlin for you guys and keeping your uh, headquarters here? Yeah, I mean, I think why I said it, it's Berlin's a creative hub. Um, there's people who are um, creating in, in sort of all different art forms here, and it's that kind of environment that that is, you know, a really inspiring hotbed for some of the things that we do. You know, we're a platform that is trying to create a community for creative expression. Um, and when you see that on the streets of Berlin, um, it's a really good reflection of, of how we can sort of bring that into, into what we're doing too. Actually, Alex said um, it's edgy, decadent, and punk. <laughs> if you give that a one of the reason of uh, a Berlin. Okay. Um, going now more to the business side, there is something that you two are also offering uh, in your companies. We have been seeing different panels here all these uh, last day, uh, two days. The importance of search and discovery. We have been seeing that 20% of uh, catalogs are just like completely unexplored, never heard. Um, it is something that, uh, I mean, companies want to get explored and want to sell, obviously. And um, I wanted to know a little bit more. I know that um, some uh, tools uh, are developed uh, with specific algorithm at Shutterstock. Shutterstock is very um, uh, known for the palette tools, spectrum tools, to find some pictures with the colors very easily. And now we can find uh, music with a mood. Can you tell us a little bit more, like how you guide the people to find what they are looking for? Yeah, sure. I mean, one of the things we hear from people who are trying to find amazing content, and that's both on the images side and the music side, is that they want to find differentiated stuff. They want to find music or images that other people, you know, aren't aren't looking at all the time. So a lot of times I'll meet with uh, some designers who are looking for images, and they'll say to me, "I've already seen all the images on the first four pages of." Google and on the first four pages of Getty and Shutterstock. I want to find some more special imagery. I want to find stuff that no one else is seeing. So we actually have functions on the site that help people um, dive deeper into the collection. Just recently we launched a tab called Undiscovered. And so if you click on the Undiscovered uh, tab, we're only going to show you algorithms of content that has no downloads. Um, so you're actually just fishing around in the areas um, that are yet to be, to be explored. Um, also, we have our labs area, which you mentioned. Um, so Shutterstock has a labs area to explore new ways of search and discovery. Um, and in that labs area, we have tools like Palette and Instant and Spectrum. And those are specifically designed to help folks find content. At the end of the day, it's our job to monetize this stuff for our artists. It's our, that's what we're here for. And uh, we need to keep coming up with these tools in order to do so. Tom, how is it a SoundCloud? Human touch curation and uh, algorithm? Yeah, it's a mixture of the two, I think. Um, you know, one of the core things about our platform is that it's open and accessible to anyone. Um, and people who have or have built um, large audiences, a lot of their audience or their fan base is actually doing the distribution for us. So um, people are finding and discovering a lot of SoundCloud content. Um, on our um, apps, on our services, but also throughout the rest of the web. Um, so that's that's a key like discovery channel. Um, and then we're also working on ways in which we can improve the continuous experience that you get. So you land on SoundCloud, and what's the next best piece of content that we can give you to um, carry on that listening experience? Um, with the launch of our latest iOS app, which we you know totally rebuilt from the ground up to be much more focused on what we think the, the new kind of listening experience is going to be. It puts um, playlists, collection, and people's own sort of likes right at the center of that experience um, so that there's reasons people can be coming back to and, and curating their own SoundCloud experience. So it's actually, you know, with 175 million listeners on a monthly basis, there's a lot of different listening models in that, and lots of different ways that people like to consume content. So we're trying to build the right experiences for the right people. Okay, um, you're develop are you developing like even more new tools for music specifically, as opposed to images? How is it Shutterstock? One way to think about Shutterstock um, is we're a part of people's workflow. So if I'm a designer, I probably got. Photoshop or something open. If I'm a videographer, I might have Final Cut Pro, and I might be combining music and video. So 
our goal is to fit our experience into people's workflow so that they just, it's a part that they need. It's one of the reasons why we're subscription. We don't want to actually put e-commerce in between people and their workflow. We'd rather just have them subscribe and then the downloading of images is just a natural thing that happens in between Photoshop and something else. In that vein, we have a new tool. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's in labs. Um, it's called Streamline. Uh, it's actually, this is a bit of a sneak preview. Um, but Streamline is a, is a tool that actually, in the web browser, combines video and audio, much the way that Final Cut Pro would. So before you even make a download, before you decide on what to purchase, you can actually start to combine audio with different video clips to see how it feels and looks. Um, we think it's going to be pretty popular and we're excited about it. So who will be the clients of Streamline? So most of our customers um, you know, who are downloading video from us today uh, will want, need audio to go with it. So really those are the folks. Basically, I mean, just for the ones who are not uh, knowing Shutterstock so well, maybe you can say a little bit more like, who are you actually selling images and music and now video plus audio together? I mean, can you make a small overview of yeah, uh, the sure. clients? One thing I think that's important difference between SoundCloud and Shutterstock is it B2C and B2B. Um, you know, Shutterstock sells assets to businesses who need licenses. So our customers are design agencies. Um, they're developers building a website. They're, they're people who need content that has a license. We actually don't own any content. We, we crowdsource it. And our, the, the artists, the musicians, the um, photographers, they own the content. We simply run a platform, and we do our best to sell that content on their behalf. Um, in this way, um, Shutterstock, you know, our customers are looking for a very specific license for a very specific use, and that's where we specialize, and that's what we monetize the best. So that's kind of the high-level overview of what we do. We are a store, uh, a marketplace for creative assets. Right, you say you're more in the B2B business, definitely. But uh, Tom, do you consider yourself as being in a B2C business? I mean, you're probably, I mean, you're offering some services to creators. Yeah, I think uh, we are somewhere in between a B2B and a B2C sometimes. Um, B2B2C sometimes, if you want to put acronyms together. Um, yeah, our, our, our end users um, are our listeners, our people who are creating, but the people who are adding content onto the platform, the people that we're um, serving, selling uh, subscriptions to, can be um, businesses, they can be labels, they can be podcasters, um, um, or they can be um, just... You or, you or me. So um, we we actually have a really wide variety of, of customers that we serve um, across the platform. Right. So let's move to these business models and uh, explore this B2B to B to C. Um, some critics say that uh, you didn't have a business model at all and that you were really quite late to the game on in introducing ads, which has been uh, now uh, launched two weeks ago with on SoundCloud. You probably know that, guys. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> to the end business. And um, it, um, it will start a new paid uh, subscription service in the coming months. I mean, you are in a beta or test phase. Or it's only in the US. Can you tell us a little bit more about that uh, on, on SoundCloud, please? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so on SoundCloud, um, for those who haven't seen it, is basically the, the third phase in the evolution of our, our service. So if you think about the first phase being creating a platform and tools for, for creators to share their sounds, um, and the second phase to be creating a better listening experience um, so that we can attract consumers who are going to listen to the content so our creators can actually build an audience as well. Um, on SoundCloud represents the, the third phase in our company's evolution of actually helping creators to monetize their work as well. Um, so what we launched a couple of weeks ago um, was um, a service which um, put some advertising against um, content that we have on the platform. Um, it is an opt-in, invite-only um, service for now for, with specific content partners um, such as, um, you know, community members um, such as Sarah Morgan, Oliver Sadie, who have been with SoundCloud for a long time, um, through to um, some labels and distributors and comedy networks like uh, Funny or Die. So um, we've, actually, um, we've actually launched that and we've had 
uh, I'd say, a, a really positive response from the community um, uh, about what we're trying to do. Um, you know, bringing ad advertising onto the platform is is never easy, but the, the reality is that what we're doing is we're creating a model where we can um, give money back to the creators. We can help them to build their careers on SoundCloud. Um, so every time someone hears an ad, that's an artist getting paid. Um, so it's, it's early days for us, and we're going to scale this. Um, but we think there's, there's a real opportunity to create an, uh, an ecosystem uh, for aspiring creators on this. So obviously, this should add a significant uh, revenue stream to SoundCloud. And uh, you are already into like, um, putting these revenues from advertising to the con contributors, to the creators. Correct. We, I mean, we actually have a, a revenue stream from our creator subscriptions that we've been mm -hmm. selling for uh, four or five years now. Um, and that's been a hugely um, successful product for us for um, um, helping to support and, and provide extra tools for, for the creators. Um, our new revenue model is, as I say, early days. We're going to scale it. Um, but we are in revenue share agreements with, with our partners on that, um, and they will be making the majority of the money. I just wanted to see like, how the advertising flow goes to the creators. You know, like, do you know how you They will take more money out of it than we do. Yeah, probably. But I mean, like, at the end, like, um, how much do I get out of this as a creator? It depends uh, what the size of your audience is. It depends how many people are listening to you. Okay. And it depends how frequently you're posting. So everyone's case is, is different. Um, and that's, I think, the value of the platform that we're trying to build is that you know, whether you are um, a huge artist or whether you're a, a, a community star like um, Sarah Morgan, um, you, know, you can be in, in, this, um, in this program. Um, and when we scale it out, you know, our, our vision is ultimately to have this program available to every single creator on the platform. Um, and then you can, be, you can be fairly rewarded for the sort of value of your work. Okay, we'll get back to you in a second. I'm just <laughs> going to, back to share the stuff. Yeah, you have an uh, um, even more transparent policy about uh, pricing. You uh, offer on-demand pricing schemes starting at a couple of euros per image and uh, enhanced licenses for merchandise and large print, but the majority of revenue that you will get um, as a creator comes, um, uh, sorry, for you, um, from subscription, and creators are typically paid something like between 28 cent to 50, no, sorry, 25 cent to 38 cent, but when you uh, sell to larger advertising companies, you will let the creator participate up to 30%, which makes, I mean, when I am a creator of a, a picture, I can get a, up to $120 per, per, per picture. So now back to the music, and let's uh, go back to the euros too. Um, you have a standard license starting at 39 euro. This is an introductionary price, and uh, enhanced licensing for 329 euros. Um, what's the plan? Can I have a subscription to, and why, I mean, what, what do I get as a contributor out of this if I manage to get inside? Um, contributors generally on Shutterstock get around 30% blended. Um, you know, as I've mentioned before, we're a marketplace and we spend a lot on marketing to drive traffic in and get people to buy your content. So if you're a musician who's joining Shutterstock, um, you know, we, we, we are gonna guarantee something around 30% blended so we have some that will sell on a subscription, some that will sell on demand, but that's where it averages out to. Um, I think the other way, to, the way to think about it if you're an artist is, um, I'm gonna get 30%, Shutterstock's gonna spend 30% marketing and going out and getting customers to make sure that the thing I put there gets eyeballs, gets ears, so that people are listening to it and buying it. And then the other 30% is for operations. So that's, that's the way we think about it. Okay. Um, going back to SoundCloud. <laughs> There are rumors, I mean, uh, the press is talking a lot about it, that you are in licensing talks with music labels um, uh, to talk about uh, royalty payments and potential equity stakes and etc. And um, yeah, I mean, with music labels on board, the company could get more users, more monetization options, better content to convince advertisers. And basically, you would be suddenly um, in another market somehow next to other companies. So um, it would be quite a big step for the companies, right? 
Well, I think, you know, SoundCloud is already um, a platform with the biggest creative community on, on the web. We have over 10 million creators who are creating on that. So I'm not sure what YouTube would say about that. I mean, YouTube says, of course, they're not an audio place because mm -hmm. you are the YouTube of audio, as you say. But YouTube was saying yesterday that, um, I mean, you know the figures. Uh, it's only 20% of audio which is somewhere uh, uh, uploaded. But basically, if you look at the top 10, it's 70% of audio which is actually listening on YouTube. So. Okay, so you're the largest, uh, you said you're the largest uh, platform for audio. We're the largest audio platform if you take video, uh, video to be YouTube's goal. I should have, uh, have in invited YouTube on top of it. <laughs> okay, we, you we go, We can you have go. a discussion with YouTube as well, I think it'll be fun. Yeah, sure. um, yeah, so like we have a huge amount of diversity of content on the platform already. Um, and obviously, when we're creating our, our program on SoundCloud, we want to have um, a wide variety of content. So there's major labels and other labels out there who have uh, content that they can bring onto the service and they can monetize from it as well. Um, so our goal is to have the platform with the widest variety of content. So um, I'm not going to talk about the specifics of any of any deals, but um, clearly we want to we want to get those guys on board. We want to be um, helping to bring their content to to our users, and we want to help create a, a different model, a different um, platform than, um, than the ones that you're mentioning. Mm. Right, I'm not going to go into the copyrights uh, uh, situation, etc. I think there were lo loads of panels about copyrights, especially yesterday also about streaming and etc. So I'm not going to deepen that one. I will go back to the competitors' uh, situation, unique advantages and etc. Going back to Shutterstock, like, uh, of course, there is um, Getty Images and uh, Getty Music, and there is um, Photolia, and there is quite a lot of accredited place on, on the image uh, side, at any case. On the music side, I mean, talking I mean, to the creators the way you do, I mean, you know, BeatSuite, come CC Mixer, I, I have to read them myself because... Who? <laughs> Yes, who exactly? Well, well, anyway, I hope they're not in the audience. Free music archives or the music bed. Do you know guys know these guys? Any, any of them? Okay. So one of the things that's interesting <laughs> okay. is um, right now as a musician, one of the best ways to monetize your content is sync licensing. It's getting your music synced to something, maybe a video or getting it into a video game or something like that. This is, this is a growth area when it comes to monetizing music. When you look at the space, at all the different websites and the places you can go to get, you know, uh, to sell your music, there's no one place that is clearly the dominant leader. Um, there's just a lot of places. I'll give you an example. We were doing user research. We were, we were interviewing people who purchase music for sync. And um, if you interview 50 people and ask them their favorite sync licensing website, you'll get 50 different answers. Um, very, very little doubling up. There's a few places, you know, that are that are okay, but like in general, it's just a very disparate space. Um, we're really excited by that because uh, Shutterstock is an e-commerce company. We're, we're good at monetizing web traffic. That's our that's a specialty. We're good at A/B testing and spending money in certain channels and driving value. We're in 20 languages. Um, we've optimized all 20 languages uh, for e-commerce. So we're excited to apply those techniques to music uh, in a way that I don't think has happened yet. About SoundCloud, I've been reading quite a lot about like Spotify is the closest rival. I mean, we can certainly argue on like is Spotify the same business model than SoundCloud? Definitely not, or not not yet. Um, but uh, it's a quite an overpopulating area here. I mean, we have big players like Spotify. In any case, we have Pandora, we have Deezer, we have R, R Radio. We have maybe late entries, Apple, Twitter, we don't know that yet. We, we have YouTube, definitely. So how do you see your unique uh, place there? What is your specific tone? I mean, we just had uh, before uh, this um, panel about uh, streaming differentiation, which was specifically for streaming, but now specifically for SoundCloud. Yeah, I think our special um, position in this market, and you're right, there's a lot of players um, who are offering sort of music and audio services. Um, the exciting part about that is everyone's helping to grow the market. It's still super early days when it comes to digital music and nobody knows what the right model is going to end up being. Nobody knows what, um, what people are going to settle on and the market has a huge amount of room to, to expand and grow. Um, so 
I think we're, every company in the space is, is helping to do that. Um, you know, we have our beliefs on, on what the right model is, and, and the one that we're pursuing is um, one that favors scale. Um, so we reach a huge um, audience, and we allow our creators to reach a huge audience. Uh, we embrace diversity, so we want to have creators of every different um, genre, every different category, every different level of expertise on the platform. Um, and I think out of that, we have a very special and unique um, audience, um, really engaged, really um, sort of vibrant creative community around that. And um, that's sort of the, the, the fundamentals of, of what our platform offers in, in this space. So when you were saying that yeah, there is a huge uh, potential for growth there, I would like to uh, give you the opportunity to tell me a little bit more. I mean, you, you, you are the VP for growth and insights. I mean, you are the VP of product, so you know best how you're going to scale this. And um, maybe, uh, uh, Tom, as long as we are... Uh, uh, I mean, I, I see you, of course. I mean, I, um, you remember what the guy said at uh, South by... So um, sorry, the guy is... Uh, <laughs> Hani Nada, the founder of uh, uh, GGV uh, Venture Capital, he was in South by Southwest and he was saying, well, in the States at least, we have something like um, 3.5 hours of sports uh, consumed by American citizens and they make um, an income of a f nearly $500 billion. They consume 14 hours of music, but they only make $70 billion. So what the fuck is happening here? That's, that's these words I'm, I'm citing. Um, and I'm like, you know, like, how we have the engagement, but we cannot monetize. And um, you have at uh, SoundCloud a new uh, vice president for business development and strategy too. And he said himself, we are at the very early stages of a, a listening, um, moving to a streaming model. But it's not really quite clear if SoundCloud is more into like going in a subscription model like Spotify or more music store like iTunes, or more radio-like, like Pandora, for example. So where do you see, as the VP for growth, where the, where the arrears for growth are the best for you right now? Yeah, a lot of, a lot of things in that question. Um, let's go with, um, you know, how do we... <laughs> how do we see ourselves in, in that space, right? Um, so yes, there's, there's, the, there's the Pandora model of radio, there's a the Spotify model of subscriptions. Um, as I said before, like, I think um, the, the scale um, that we have, um, the platform, like open platform of accessibility, and then um, allowing people to, to make money on, on, on their content through advertising, um, there's, pretty good examples out there in the marketplace of people who've made that work to a fairly fairly healthy extent. So I think there's that's a real possibility for us. Um, when we talk about specific angles of, of growth, you know, still the majority of people um, consuming content are, are listening um, on, on radio or are paying on, um, for CDs or buying downloads, but like the, the streaming market in terms of actual share of listening is like if you look at the entire amount of listening that's happening, it's still a small. So we're going to grow with the market there. Um, I think you know we can we can do more, and what we're trying to do more with our, our latest product um, experiences is help people to get a deeper, richer experience with the content that we already have on SoundCloud. So how do we expose um, content to you? How do we help you curate and create your own experience on there? Um, and then the third one for us as well will be um, how can we help to you know, really take SoundCloud um, global as well? Uh, we're already a global platform. Um, That's what I wanted to say, you're right. Yeah, we're already a global platform, but we currently only um, exist in, in English in mm -hmm. most of our products. Um, and most of the work that we've done to date in terms of content partnerships, um, distribution partnerships, it's, it's all been very much focused um, on English-speaking markets. Um, and I think when we've learned an, an enough about um, how to make our on SoundCloud program work um, in our core market, then we can take that to, to new territories and, and help create new models in, in other places where you know, there's explosive growth in, in the internet and in consumption and in wealth in general. So I think like, there's, a, there's a huge opportunity from that perspective. 
Okay, we'd have a, a last question about growth perspectives, and I turn uh, back to Shutterstock before I open up to the audience. Um, I mean, as I said, I was uh, uh, rectifying my figures every week with a growth of 42%. Um, I mean, that's growing. <laughs> And uh, you have the multiple future growth opportunities in global, video, B2B sales. You didn't uh, mention music in your last report, actually. So where for you are the next opportunities of growth from the Shunderstock point of view? I mean, video is exploding. It's, I mean, look, if you look at your Facebook feeds, right, you're, you're just, it's just video. Um, video as a content type is, is taking off. Uh, that video needs audio, and that's that was the main reason for us launching a music site. So we're we're super excited about the video growth. Um, you know, so we're overall growth of 42% year over year. Um, within that 42%, there are things growing less than that, and there are things growing a lot more than that. Um, video is growing a lot more than 42% year over year. Video is one of the fastest uh, revenue types we have. We think music's going to go right along with it. Um, we believe that music will just be a percentage of video growth over time. So um, syncing music and video is just a, it's a huge opportunity for musicians. So speaking to this audience, um, more broadly, uh, Shutterstock's excited in offering all asset types that folks need to do creative work. So um, we've recently added SkillFeed. It's an e-learning video. Uh, so that's pretty exciting. Um, we've now added music. So we plan on adding more content types, whatever it is our customers need. So we have over, over a million paying customers um, who, who use us for, to, to tell their story, to buy images, to get music, to get video. And we're going to keep offering them more content types that get them excited. Those are the areas for growth. Yeah, I think my two guests are totally into growth. When I uh, see from little electronic music, streaming stuff, etc., to... Uh, podcast from the White House, and when I see a couple of images um, with a little bit of subscription model by uh, John at the beginning, and now making the entrance of um, uh, in introductory uh, sessions at the uh, House of Cards, I think like, White House, House of Cards, you guys, you're on, <laughs> you're on your ways. Okay, good, I would like to open it up to the, to the audience, if you have any questions to these two here, it's quite rare enough to have, uh, way out here, it's quite rare enough to have SoundCloud uh, talking too, so <laughs> take your chance. Uh, one question is, where are the, those platforms when you think uh, creators could get closer to, you, in order to get a synchronization deal with, you, you, you said before that you talk with many synchronization companies, and where, can you name just five of the platforms or places where they look for uh, music? You mean the competitors in the sync space? Yes. Is that kind of what you're looking for? I mean, there's a bunch. Um, a couple off, I mean, obviously Shutterstock, Getty has a music offering. Um, and then it's, it's a lot of smaller offerings. I mean, you can go to Warner Music, right? They're going to have their own offering. Uh, you know, Rumblefish, our content provider currently at Shutterstock, is their, Rumblefish's main business model is looking at YouTube and saying, hey, this is a song that's been uploaded, you know, you need to pay for a sync license for this song. So Rumblefish is a great place to put your music. Um, so there's four right there. All right, here's the second question. Hi, uh, I'm here with Sound Dudes, a startup that helps uh, sound creators and musicians expose their music and grow their fan base. Uh, we've analyzed uh, through the SoundCloud API about 150,000 sound creators, um, and we've found uh, many interesting statistics about their growth rate and, and engagements. I was wondering if you could provide us with a benchmark on yours. Um, average or some kind of statistics about sound creators growth rate per week um, on a fan base? How many fans, uh, what is the average of the fan growth we can expect as sound creators? Yeah, I don't actually know the answer to that, to be perfectly honest. Um, and I think it's going to be really, really varied. Um, you know, with the wide range of kind of creators that we have on, if you actually 
work out an average, it's going to be hugely skewed from a distribution point of view, and this is where my nerdy stats stuff comes in. But um, So an average it probably isn't that useful. Um, I think what is useful is how do you grow that audience, um, and I'd be super interested in seeing some of the, uh, the analysis that you guys have done. Um, but, you know, it's, it's basic things to, to help share your content onto multiple platforms, you know, creating a community, contributing to that community. Um, and the more you do those kind of things, the more the, the audience base grows as, as well with it. Um, but, yeah, I'd love to see your numbers, and then we can compare. Come on stage. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Doesn't work anymore. And now a thousand of questions. Okay, now... Uh, now it's working. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Hi, uh, my name is Andreas, and I'd like to thank you for the insight. It's been really interesting. Um, well, I want to say I'm a diehard uh, SoundCloud user. I use it more than Facebook, and I love it. Um, but among the communities of, of my friends who use it a lot, we've been quite worried about this whole ad introduction of it. Sure, I like the idea, okay, if I can make money of it, that's, that's, that's amazing. Um, but I'm still, I like the sober interface of it, and for me it's appealing, and I think once it'll be bombarded with ads, if, if that's the case, I don't know, um, I'm, I might reconsider because I think that would, I don't like to, because exposing music is an intimate thing, and to have corporations deal with that, or, or I, I don't know how it's going to look like, but that something that kind of worries me. Has that kind of... Um, been dealt with on the table um, at SoundCloud when you were thinking about introducing ads. Were there some concerns on the table that, uh, um, yeah, that were discussed amongst your coworkers? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, the our community and our creative user base is the most important thing to us. Without them, we wouldn't have. And without you, like we wouldn't have a business. Um, but it's important that we do try and make a business. Um, and so uh, one of the ways we think we can do that is to support um, artists with, with advertising. Um, it's important to know that you know, that's, an, that's gonna be an opt-in. We're not gonna put advertising on um, your work if you're, not, um, if you're not wanting to do that. Um, and we think really carefully, like our team thinks really carefully about how to do this in the way that does not disrupt the user experience. Um, I think that's one of the things that our, our audience really values in our product is the design and, and user experience of it. Um, and so we've we've worked a lot to try and make sure that what we bring on is something that is as as beautiful um, as the rest of our products. Um, you know, we've we've brought in some proprietary formats and we've brought in some standard formats, but we're only working with partners at this stage. Um, that can match like the level of expectations um, that we want for our for our user base, um, and so once we've learned from that, we figure out how we can scale it in the, in the right way. Um, I think we can build a good experience around that. Another question? I see there is one at the back. Back there. Hi, um, quick thing, I came in late, so in case this has been dealt with, just let me know and I just move off. Um, to Shutterstock, um, how do you feel about all these mobile photography marketplaces selling, buying, sharing community things? Is there, I mean like, I am market as an example. I know that you guys have been a mobile um, se buy, sell marketplace thing as well, um, but I see them like popping up everywhere. Um, do you fear them or not? It's just like, no. So, um, yeah, we haven't talk, touched on this uh, topic, and it's Thank super God. interesting. <laughs> um, it's interesting because it's an incredibly hard problem to solve. Um, think about it like, let's take Facebook. How, how many photos are on Facebook? Like many billion, I, I would assume. Um, and how many of those are commercially viable? Are, are things that people gonna, are going to actually want to use? I don't know, 1%? And... Yes. How do we create algorithms to determine um, what humans think are commercially viable? That's an incredibly challenging problem and one that I think is well worth trying to solve. That's essentially what these marketplaces are trying to say. They're gonna, they're, these marketplaces are popping up, like I am, which we, we, we're friends with the I am guys, they're great. Um, you know, they're saying, wow, we have this community of images. Um, how are we going to actually take what was a community and find in there the commercially viable percentage, which is probably a single digit percentage, right? Maybe out of all the, 
the um, whatever millions or billions of photos they have, there's one or two percent that are actually useful in a commercial purpose. Um, that's a tough problem. So we're excited to see how things turn out. Um, we also have our toe in the water. We, we also have an app that lets people upload. And, and um, so, you know, we'll see how it goes, but um, early days. All right, because they just bought one of these startups last Site. week. Site.io, I think. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Did you not try to buy them? Or did it, did we are working work? with three different vendors right now, and okay. we have our own <laughs> search and discovery team that does image recognition. So at the moment, Shutterstock actually reviews uh, with a human uh, every oh, yeah. image that goes into our system. Now, it's not all just people. We also use algorithms to determine what objects are in images to figure out whether it's commercially viable. Um, we are not yet to the point where we feel safe having no people involved. Because at the end of the day, our customers want a license. They want to know that they can use this image in, in their marketing, their advertising, and they can use it without feeling concerned that it came from somebody who's going to sue them. Or it has a picture of somebody in the image who's then going to sue them. So we're just not there yet from a technology perspective, but I think the next five years are going to be super interesting. Well, you guys, is it, are there other questions? Because otherwise I'll just continue. <laughs> yeah, no, you, you, you can go on. You can, you can still yeah. have one. All right. Um, I heard that you guys recently had a hackathon. Um, are you guys ever going to share what's happened, like what actually came out of it? Because I was only allowed to stay for the pizza in the beginning. <laughs> Um, boy, most of the things in labs are hackathon born. Just, you know, so you can actually go to our labs area and see our cool search and discovery tools and almost everyone, every one of those have a root in the hackathon. Uh, this new streamline tool that I just talked about that, you know, isn't quite out yet, but you can actually go to the URL. We just haven't started the marketing or anything. Um, that streamline tool is, is a hackathon, hackathon born project. So absolutely you're going to see the winners in like six to 12 months um, because Every hackathon, um, we get a nugget of an idea that is going to turn into something. Very rarely do we get like a finished thing that we're going to put live. That actually is, is not usually the case. Usually you get some nugget of an idea, so coming soon. Other questions? Another question from somebody else? Yes, I see. <laughs> thank you. No, thank you. Great questions. Uh, there is one person here and one person here. I hardly see them under the fire. <laughs> Hi there, just um... Sorry, who, who is the qu Ah, here is. Just a question um, for you, Tom. Um, I really liked you talking about expanding into different languages, and um, I see great op opportunities for growth. Um, I would have thought that that should be possible with the existing business model. I mean, you've got a great business model, or had a great business model for the last couple of years, and um, I think you would have found a lot of um, paying contributors, say, in Spanish-speaking countries, or India, or China. Um, why wasn't that type of business model enough for you and your company and your investors? Why did you have to switch into a second business model? It's a, it's a great question. Um, so first of all, we already have paying subscribers um, across, the, across the planet. Um, you know, um, our, our creator subscriptions are available um, everywhere. Um, we, have a, we have a pricing structure for that at the moment, which is 29 euros or 99 euros a year. Um, and so for some markets, that, that's not as economically viable. Um, as for others, so we don't see as high um, conversion rate on those products um, in, let's say, Brazil. Um, so I think, you know, the question for us has been, what's the right combination of business models? Um, we know that what we're getting at the moment is, is a, you know, it's a strong contributor to our to our growth, and and, and it helps to keep us grounded on on like what's providing value to our creator user base. Um, but ultimately, this is coming out of um, out of feedback um, and research that we do with our with our creator um, user base. You know, they thinking about the phases that we've gone through. Like, they wanted the best tools to be able to share online. Um, they people want to be able to build an audience, um, and for a small section of um, of those creators, they also want to be making money from that. They want to be earning a living, and they want to be able to build a career. Um, 
And so a model which kind of does the opposite instead of charging creators to, to share um, can actually provide revenue source for creators. Um, we think that's, that's not only has a huge potential from a business perspective, but moreover is, is more about our mission. Um, it's more about how do we like help and empower creators on, on the platform. So um, it's, it's a combination of those, those models, um, but also like what's, what's important for our users. We had another question here, I think, yeah, here you are. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. Hello. It's it's. Um, I have a question uh, regarding SoundCloud. Uh, is there a possibility for record labels to upload content only for a specific client? So that that means um, not all um, user can can uh, or do have access to to um, to your music. Only a specific client base does have um, uh, access to it and um, maybe they have to to um, to log in or to to get a, a secure way to do that yeah absolutely it's one of um, one of our key like promotional features that we offer to users is the ability to create um, what we call a secret link so you can create a track that's that's private only to the people that have the link you can do the same thing. Um, to embed a widget um, to only people who have um, got access to that. So, um, absolutely, you can do that. And uh, do you see it as well who then upload, uh, uh, who uploaded your track? Or, um, and uh, is there a way as well to, to uh, get the clients different, um, different uh, formats, maybe MP3 or, uh, or WAV files, 48 uh, kilohertz? So our platform is pretty straightforward. What happens when you upload is um, we create a, a streamable version of your sound, um, and that's the one that you'll hear when you hit the play button on the website. Um, and then um, you can also create a downloadable version, and what um, that, that does is enable anyone to, to, to download the original file. So we don't uh, do any... Uh, uh, recoding of the file format. Um, it's whatever you want to put up is what you can let um, let your audience uh, download. Um, and that's actually part of our creator pr um, premium subscription as well. So you get a thousand of those um, on our um, premium level and then it's unlimited when you're on the um, pro unlimited level. And how much would that be? That's 99 euros a year. Yes. Thank you. We have a last question here. I have to take care of the time here. <laughs> and he has been waiting quite a while. Ah, here we yeah, go. He, he has been waiting all the time. So. <laughs> Hi, Steko. Um, can you tell me more about how do you deal with copyright? Um, like, how do you make sure that if I upload something to, let's say, uh, image uh, Shutterstock, uh, an image to Shutterstock or my song, um, how do you take care of my rights as a rights holder. Yeah, um, so Shutterstock has kind of a terms of, of agreement or a licensing agreement that you kind of sign up for. And when the customer purchases, they're agreeing to only use it in these specific cases. It has a, sing a, a singular list of those cases and this is um, you know, the, the premise of the business model. Is there like a, a piece of that as a rights? Like we don't own any of the music. We only own the ability to give a specific license to the music that the artist has agreed upon when they upload. So, you know, the point of upload and the point that you read that agreement is the point at which um, that we're basing our business model off of. Does that make sense? Is, that, is there a more specific licensing question you have? Yes, but... Hello? Okay. Yes, but what happens if my image gets stolen or my music gets stolen? Like, Got it. Do you so, help with this as well? Yeah, I mean, you know what's amazing about communities and um, our, our community of contributors are policing this better than we ever could. We do have ways ourselves of analyzing where things are being used and then flagging them and then saying, hey, giving takedown notices or whatever. We have a big legal department that handles that. But also, you know who's all over it is our contributor base. Like when they see each other's images being used in ways that shouldn't be, they usually flag it, send us emails, 
Um, you know, music, it's early days. We just launched it four months ago. Um, but we'll support those same uh, type of community-based policing. It's the best source I've seen of copyright, uh, keeping copyrights real that I've in the market. Excellent. So trust the community, <laughs> so to speak. As one is Look to the community for help. Yeah. It, it, you're not going to solve it all yourself. You know what I mean? Like you, you need to, it takes a bunch of people. Okay, well, thank you very much, Tom, VP of uh, Growth and Insights of uh, SoundCloud, and uh, Wyatt, VP of uh, Product at Shutterstock. I'm super happy to have you uh, guys uh, here um, for the Berlin Music Week, and I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, yeah, let's have a drink. Yeah. <laughs>